Imagine you're working abroad and you find that the local culture is very different from your own culture back home. Would you try to adapt your leadership approach to better suit the local culture or just be yourself? This is not an easy question to answer. We will now explore the relationship between leadership and culture. Whilst we will focus on the research findings relating to national culture, I believe the key conclusions we will make are also relevant to other types of culture, such as organisational culture. From the outset, I should acknowledge that there are differences of opinion on this topic. One view is that national culture significantly affects leadership opportunities and approaches. I was reminded of this recently when I was contacted by a colleague who was trying to establish a leadership development workshop in Cambodia. As a relatively young female leader, she felt that significant cultural barriers limited the role she could play in this initiative. Barriers that wouldn't have been as significant in my home country, Australia. Another view plays down these differences. The following quote from the CEO of a leadership and governance centre in Malaysia summarises this view. The assumption that people are motivated differently around the world and that leaders must adapt their behaviour accordingly is wrong. Having led and managed people in eight countries across three continents, I have found the exact opposite to be true. Great leadership looks the same wherever you are. My own view is halfway between these two perspectives. The fundamentals of exemplary leadership are culturally transferable, but there are some significant aspects of culture that savvy leaders need to be aware of and accommodate. Let's look at some of the research findings that support the view that the fundamentals of leadership remain the same across national cultures. Professors Jim Cousers and Barry Posner investigated what people from different countries in six continents look for and admire in leaders. The top four leadership attributes are consistent across cultures. They are honesty, forward-looking, inspiring and competent. So irrespective of their location, people expect leaders to exhibit these four attributes. A famous leadership study investigated this issue. It's called the Global Leadership and Organisational Behaviour Effectiveness Research Program, or GLOBE for short. It involved approximately 170 researchers, 60 countries and 17,000 survey respondents. The study identified 22 leadership attributes that were seen across cultures as desirable and eight as undesirable. Desirable ones included being positive, communicative and dependable. Undesirable ones include being ruthless, asocial and dictatorial. Researchers have also explored whether the popular transformational leadership style developed in North America is culturally transferable. A study involving leaders in Ethiopia, India, Pakistan and the Philippines found that the frequency of using transformational leadership behaviours was positively correlated with desirable leadership outcomes in all countries. Nevertheless, there were some significant differences between these countries with respect to the frequency in which leaders used specific behaviours. The GLOBE study also examined cultural differences with respect to six leadership styles. Specifically, it sought to identify whether these styles were seen as contributing to or inhibiting outstanding leadership. It found many significant differences between cultures. To illustrate, let's assume I was going to do some development work in China. The GLOBE study indicates that in Australia, the national culture is generally more supportive of a participatory leadership style than in China. Consequently, I may choose to be a bit less participatory and a bit more directive when in China. In my own work, I've had the pleasure of working with developing leaders from many countries. Some cultural differences are obvious and significant. For example, I've noticed that the strategies leaders employ to challenge the process vary significantly depending on the surrounding culture. For example, emerging leaders in China typically use formal processes to do this. They are also more aware of ensuring leaders with authority save face compared to equivalent emerging leaders in my home country. So what can we conclude about the relationship between leadership and national culture? First, the fundamentals of leadership are transferable. These fundamentals include key leadership attributes and behaviours and seeing leadership as a process of influence that delivers direction, alignment and commitment. Second, there are cultural nuances that leaders should recognise and accommodate when working in foreign cultures or with people from foreign cultures. The old adage that when in Rome, do as the Romans do, has some currency. There are limits to this of course. Authentic leaders need to be guided by ethical thinking and act in accordance with their own personal values. 
Third, leaders operating in foreign cultures should quickly learn about cultural nuances. Savvy leaders could use developmental methods such as working with local mentors, getting feedback from colleagues and frequently reflecting. So what's your view on this topic? To what extent do you think national culture affects who can emerge as leaders and how they operate to drive change? The more I learn about this topic, the more I am struck by the similarities between leadership in different cultural settings rather than the differences.